Lucifer, a fallen angel, was once one of God's highest and most beautiful creations. His name literally means light-bearing because of his greatness and grace. However, his pride destroyed him and he was cast down from heaven for attempting to rebel against the highest. Since then, Lucifer, who became the personification of evil, the ruler of the underworld, opposes God's plan and tries to corrupt mankind. His irreconcilable opposition to God and his desire to oppose good became the reason why he can never be forgiven. The following is the main point of view from the standpoint of the Christian tradition. First, forgiveness implies repentance and a sincere desire to make amends. However, Lucifer persists in his rebellion and refuses to recognize the greatness and authority of the Creator. His pride does not allow him to humble himself and repent of his transgressions. Secondly, God, being the embodiment of absolute goodness, justice and holiness, cannot forgive the one who embodies absolute evil. Lucifer deliberately and systematically goes against God's commandments, enticing people to sin and trying to lead them away from the true path. Third, forgiving Lucifer would imply recognizing the legitimacy of his rebellion against God and his attempt to usurp his authority. This would contradict the very essence of the highest as the supreme moral authority and universal arbiter. Thus, the absolute irreconcilability of the positions of God and Lucifer excludes the possibility of forgiveness of the fallen angel. Lucifer committed the unpardonable Christian sin of pride, rebelling against his Creator. He deliberately and adamantly rejects God's will, making absolute evil his goal and way of life. For the Christian tradition, Lucifer's inability to forgive has deep symbolic meaning. It demonstrates that even for God's infinite mercy there are limits. Sins can be forgiven, but only if a person repents and seeks to reform himself. Irreconcilable rebellion against the highest moral truth leads to final and irrevocable condemnation. For many admirers of Lucifer, he appears not as the embodiment of absolute evil, but as a symbol of freedom, independent thinking and rebellion against tyranny. In their eyes, he is a hero who dares to stand up to a cruel and oppressive God who demands unquestioning obedience. According to this interpretation, Lucifer was not created evil, but found his individuality and became a victim of unjust exile for his pursuit of knowledge and independence of thought. They see his rebellion against God as a struggle for liberation from slavish submission to a higher power. Lucifer worshippers accuse Christianity of demonizing free reason and individuality. They argue that God actually deserves condemnation for his jealousy, anger, and intolerance of dissent. Whereas Lucifer represents the values of equality, self-knowledge, and liberation from spiritual oppression. From this perspective, it is Lucifer who deserves forgiveness and recognition for his role as a liberator of humanity from blind submission. And God should repent for the unjust condemnation and banishment of one of his supreme creatures simply because of his desire for independent thought. For Lucifer's admirers the idea of his forgiveness by a higher power seems absurd, because, in their opinion, he has not committed any transgressions for which he should ask for forgiveness. On the contrary, in their eyes he is a hero whose rebellion against oppressive tyranny should be welcomed. Thus, this alternative interpretation completely overturns traditional Christian morality, declaring Lucifer a freedom fighter and God an oppressive oppressor. Hence the inability and unwillingness to forgive Lucifer, who for them is the liberator of humanity.